Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rob Gill here at the Profit Center, Epic, the Hallowed Halls, Red Bank, New Jersey. And I have the good fortune, you know, every once in a while when you do business and, and you create really good opportunities, you meet people that thrive in the game of life, which is called the game of life. And, you know, whether it's great husband, great parenting, a uh, great coworker, great boss, you find some of these folks when you do what I do for a living. And today I have with me Brian Fitzhenry. What's up, Brian? Pleasure to see you. How are you doing? Very good. Uh, Brian is is somebody that, you know, when I model after what it looks like in the well-rounded space of life, he is somebody that that really has always impressed me since I met him. We, we, we have connections that go way back to Bayonne, New Jersey, where I grew up and some of his relatives. But just from a standpoint of, of seeing how he is with his family and, and the way he ran his business and everything else, it's important for you folks out there, whatever you're doing in life, you got to model somebody. You got to model somebody in business that's at the highest level that you you know you checked what they did. But same thing in life, and and Brian checks off both of those for us. So you know, Brian, thanks for coming in today, man. I really appreciate it. I wouldn't say good. For, I wouldn't say it's good fortune for him or anything like that that I'm being here with you. But I, but I'll, I'll take that the compliment. Please. I feel very lucky. <laughs> I feel very lucky to have gotten to know you. Uh, you and your wife Donna. Same Donna's here. Donna's over there same taking here, some pictures. And, you know, Brian, where did it all start? Like, where are you from? Well, I live, I grew up and was born and raised in North Arlington, New Jersey. Um, as Rob said, my family is from Bayonne. My mom uh, was from Jersey City, mm. and my dad grew up in Bayonne, and many of my family members know his family members very well. Yep. Um, Rob's family was in, uh, was your father a cop or a fireman? He was uh, 27 years. He was a police officer. Police officer. Yep. And, of course, my cousin married one of his cousins. Yep. So her last name is Gil, believe that, it or not. That's what happens. And my father's youngest brother was a Bayonne fireman, and my younger, my cousins were, were firemen. So we come from a family very similar in upbringing. Absolutely. Um, with their their dedication to uh, emergency services in our communities. But you grew up in North Arlington, correct? I grew up my entire life in North Arlington, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. And, and your early years, because um, you're, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, you're, uh, you know, there's a lot of different things that are, you're in a major transition right now, right? Big time, yeah. It's, and, uh, and you, you know, you're looking at some of the things that are happening from an entrepreneurial perspective, but also generational wealth, right? right? and uh, respecting the value of the dollar bill. I've noticed that with you from the very first time I met you. Mm -hmm. You know, understanding that money could work like soldiers if it's done the right way and if there's proper planning along the way. Correct. And my yeah. question for you is, in high school, right, what was your world like then that transitioned into college and eventually led you to where you are? Like, what was going on there? I gotta tell you something, you know, when, when I grew up in the 70s as a child, yep. when I was born, I was born in the mid 60s, uh, my life wasn't much different than people who grew up in the 50s and the 60s. Yep. Um, we didn't have a lot of clothes. We didn't have a lot of cars. Mm -hmm. We didn't go on a lot of vacations. Yep. We didn't have a lot of sneakers. We didn't have, sure as heck didn't have a lot of baseball caps. Yeah. Uh, when I went to baseball practice, we didn't have our own bat. We brought our own glove, and we didn't have a lot of bottles of water with us. I totally relate to that. You know? yep. um, nowadays, uh, you know, and, and, that, and that lifestyle for me was exactly the same. I came from a family where I woke up every day, breakfast was on the table. Yep. Um, it was important to get to school on time. It was important to get to school, and it was important for my parents to make sure that my brother and I and my sister were educated. Yeah. Um, and what and high school did you go to? I went to Queen of Peace High School, which yep. is, is no longer with us anymore. Uh, unfortunately, it, it went out of business about four or five years ago. When I was in high school, we beat them at the buzzer. Go ahead. Uh, well, when I was in high school, St. Peter's Prep was nothing at the time. Just kidding, of course. <laughs> <laughs> So you go to Queen of Peace? So I went to Queen of Peace High School. Um, I went to the feeder school, which is Queen of Peace Grammar School. Uh, my mom and dad both were Catholic school uh, kids. My yep. dad, of course, went to the same alma mater uh, that Rob went to, St. Peter's Prep in good old Jersey City. My mother went to the famed basketball school, St. Anthony's in Jersey City. Wow, I did and not know that. Yes, and uh, of course, my brother and sister and I, and my wife, who's sitting way the heck over there, she um, went to Queen of Peace as well. We went to the grammar school first. Yep. Did you know Donna in high school? Uh, I knew the family. I knew her. She had a sister as older than me and okay. another sister younger than me. And Understood. There are three girls in the Newton family. Yeah. Um, and we'll get into the I'm, Newton I'm family. I'm married to the youngest one. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. So what, high, what college did you go to? Oh, so I, I ended up going, you know, I, it was very important for my parents that I, I went to college. A lot yeah. of my friends went the, the police officer route. Some went to the military. Yep. Um, I remember actually even raising the word military to my mother, and she was like adamantly against it. My mom was never that mother where she put her foot down. Yep. But for some reason, she put her foot down at that particular time because she wanted me def desperately to go to, to go to She work. saw with Vietnam and yeah, she yeah. came and that, That's pretty much probably the case. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was important for the gods, but I liked to work. Yeah. And I was working in a law firm at the time uh, when I first got into college. 
Um, so I chose to go to school locally. So I went to St. Peter's University. Oh, you did go to St. Peter's College? Yep, I did. Okay, yeah. Awesome. Yep. That's great. And then, and then in college, did you learn like what you wanted to do after college, or did you kind of did that fall into boy, your lap? Oh boy, that, that's. I, I I think that one of the f one of the few things that people realize about me, and one of the things I really loved was I have no problem being in front of people. I have no problem being in front of people whatsoever. Yeah. Um, I enjoy being in the crowd. Um, therefore, it made my life and my future of being in sales and marketing a little easier for me mm. um, than it would for some other people. Um, for instance, I've never done a podcast in my entire life. It's but first I think time I, for everything. Um, but I'm enjoying myself so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, at college I became a political science major um, because my cousin Bobby Parks became a political science major. Another Bayonne guy, by the way. Rest in peace, Bobby. Yep, rest in peace. Died 9-11, worked for yep. Kenneth Fitzgerald. Um, he has the same middle name as me. Did you know that? Oh, uh, Robert Emmett. Robert Emmett, yeah, Robert mm -hmm. Emmett Parks, yep. And, and for all the folks out there, just so you know how close this is, he was our paper boy when I was a little kid. Right, that's right. Uh, he was 12 years older than me, 12 years older. You know that I forgot that you're rel the, the rel I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. That you were related to that. Well, today's September 7th, so September yeah. 11th is a big, uh, is a big. Uh, 20 years. Memorial in our family. Uh, mm. I tell people all the time, I said, you know, they made movies about D-Day and they made movies about, about uh, Pearl Harbor. And I tell people all the time, 9-11 for our generation, even though, even though you and I are a couple of years apart, 9-11 yep. for our generation was our Kennedy moment. When you, when you asked my mom where she was uh, when Kennedy got shot, she could tell you exactly where she was. Yeah. When you asked me where I was when I found out when 9-11 happened, um, I could tell you exactly where I was. Thanks for sharing that. And, yeah. and for all you folks out there, what's important is I always talk about what you get into your nervous system. So you could have all the logic up here and be book smart, but that may not translate into business. But once you begin to learn how to get things into your nervous system, and, and what Brian was just talking about, and this was just because of what happened that day, for all of us that were at the right age, we really knew what was going on in our lives at, at that particular moment because it was so ingrained in our nervous system. And it was right in our backyard. It was in our backyard. Literally and, in our backyard. And seeing the smoke come out and everything else was unbelievable. Yeah, Do you sure. know that I, I worked down the block, although that night, Giants lost the night before. Yeah. There was Monday Night Football. I That's overslept. Correct. Giants so, were in Tampa Bay. Yeah, no. No, Yo, Denver. Kansas City. De no, Denver, I'm sorry. Denver. You're right, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's right, Denver. So um, I didn't right. go in the next day, but my buddy, I'll never forget, crazy, he calls me because um, the bus, when it got out of the tunnel, they, they stopped traffic. Yeah. And he was like, oh, my God, why is it on fire? Because, yeah. you know, everyone on the ground did not know it was a plane. They thought it was an explosion at that point, unless they actually, I'm talking about the first hour. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. It, you know, people didn't know what was going on. Um, it was, uh, it was very a crazy shaky. time. Sure yeah. was. Sure yeah. was. Yeah. So, so, you know, political science in college. You know, one yep. of the things I, when we first started to get to know each other, I remember you were into politics at that particular point when I met you. Um, I, I was, I was always the backside of politics, and what I mean by the backside of politics. But is your knowledge that, was great about it, though. Um, that's what it's I definitely thought. a hobby. Yeah, it's definitely like, a hobby, and that's not an easy hobby. Like no, that's a that's no. a challenging hobby. No. So, when you go to college, because I really want to know how you and Donna met. Um, how did that start? Donna and I. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> I was her bartender. How's that sound? Um, when I was in college, you know, I worked at a law firm. At, the, at, at that time, when I first started working in a law firm at 18 years old, I always wanted to be a lawyer. Yeah. I always thought I'd be that ju that 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 lawyer in front of the judge. And you would have been a good lawyer if you wanted. You to know, be a what's lawyer. funny is, um, I didn't go to law school. I think it's fairly obvious. Um, but when I started working, for, when I was at St. Peter's College. I was bartending at night, wow. all right? And during the day after school, I would go to school from eight o'clock to 12 o'clock. And then I had an internship with IBM Corporation. Um, my last two years, my last four semesters at St. Peter's College, they have a great internship program there, by the way, hmm. um, which gives you wonderful experience. So I ended up getting a full-time job there as a result of those four semesters working there. Wow. But I never gave up my bartending job at night, thank God. And I thank God because um, one day this girl who I've known my whole life and her family my whole life walked into the bar when I was bartending. Um, and again, I had to get up at five o'clock in the morning the next day to go to New York because I worked for IBM in Manhattan. Yep. Um, but this young lady walked in and it was her 21st birthday and um, I was throwing bottle caps at her and throwing ice cubes at her. That's how I got her attention. <laughs> <laughs> that works in, in North she, Jersey. She, that's she, very, that's a very, that's a very, effective tool on sure how to is. figure and out who you're going to marry. Uh, because of, of those actions, she immediately fell in love with me and the rest is history. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and how many kids do you guys have? We have three children, 23, and we have twins that are 21 uh, each, obviously. That's what wow. twins are. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. So um, did you guys get married at a young age? 
Um, no, I, I was almost 28. We met, um, I think I was probably, well, I shouldn't say I met, we started dating when I was about 22, 23 ish. Yeah. 23. No, nah, I was probably more like 23, 24. She was 21, obviously. Yep. Because um, she was in the bar legally that day. Um, was she illegally in the week before? Yeah, more likely. Got yeah, it. Most Understood. Definitely. Yep. Fake most ID likely. and everything. No doubt about it, but I didn't check it, thank goodness. I, <laughs> I would have let her in anyway. It didn't make a difference. <laughs> so you guys are dating, and I'm assuming you're working on IBM at this point. Yeah, I was. And, I was. And that world, you know, I'm sure you really kind of crafted it on your sales. Uh, you seem to be natural. IBM had, a, IBM had an incredible program. Now, mind you, the kids that were in this program went to, went to places like Notre Dame. Yep. Uh, not a whole lot of kids from St. Peter's College were involved in this program. Um, my, cool. my, my, and they, you, you, they put you in something called a management program. Marketing management program, it was called. And you went to basically, it's like going to graduate school. And they sent you away for one month straight. Wow. And it was purely how to develop sales, marketing plans, and how to get in front of the customer and sell your product. That's all it was. And this was from IBM USA. Was it high-level training? Like when you High-level training. It? Yeah. Um, they put us, we were in school basically 12 hours a day. Uh, we had a class president, believe it or not, and somebody that I know was a class president, believe it or not. Um, we had a secretary and a, and, a, and a treasurer, and there were about 45 to 50 people in our class. Um, they nominated somebody to be the class president, and somehow they nominated me, and next so, thing I was president. That's a, thank you for sharing that, Brian, because it's not a coincidence. If you know Brian, it's a gravitational pull that he has. Um, I don't know if he said, hey, listen, you know, when they first announced I want to be the class president, but your ability to communicate with people and be an actionable leader, right? Right? Because you got to be able to. I'm not good at. I'm not good at sitting back, and relaxing, and enjoying the show. That I can assure you of. <laughs> and if people are going to follow you, you seem to be a guy that has demonstrated over the years and all the different things that we've spoken about. This is mm -hmm. I've never heard this story before. Um, the ability to galvanize energy. Right? Okay. Um, th that's my words. Yeah. That's based on what I've seen. Um, and it's interesting. So, so now, listen, you got people that watch this and um, they're coming up, they're young. Yeah, what sure. was it, what was it about like, hey, you know, let me, let me somehow be the, the president of this class. Like what, what, what happened then? Somebody nominated me for the position actually. I didn't nominate myself for it. Yeah. Um, I don't remember and the girl's once name. once you were nominated. This is, this is 1992. Yeah. That's, that's no, so I'm interesting wrong. though. It's earlier than that, right? 88, 89, excuse me. Because I got out of college in 1988, so it was 88, 89, yeah. That's so unbelievable. So yeah. you get nominated, you're there for a month, yep. and you learn the game of sales. It was very difficult. It was kind of like getting an MBA crammed down into 30 mm. straight business days. And then you went back a month later. So I came back. It's funny how this ties into to meeting my wife. I come back, um, and I get off the plane, and the first thing I did was go to the bar I worked at because it was Friday night. And I had a jacket and tie on because that's what you did back in those days. Nowadays, we dress and go to work like this. Back in those days, when you worked in Manhattan, yeah. you had to wear a jacket and tie, an umbrella, a top coat, yep. London fog, and your galoshes. London fog. Remember? <laughs> Nothing worse than walk around with, with the wingtips that are soaking wet for eight hours for <laughs> a day. London so fog. I walk into the bar, and there's um, uh. my now wife and her sister standing there. Now, we you were dating at this point. Uh, no, we were just kind of communicating. Got it. Kind of communicating. Understood. You know, you know, communicating, you know, throwing ice cubes and throwing, you know, flipping bottle caps. At did she throw them back? No, she never threw okay. them back. All right. no, she never threw but them did back. she throw them back now? I think if she threw them back, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. With talk, did she know? throw them back now? Um, yes, definitely. No, she throws <laughs> rocks back at me now. Um, just kidding. So you get there Friday night, yep, boom. Yep, start talking to her, and um, I, I handed her my business card. <laughs> <laughs> And consequently, of course, she didn't call me. Uh, I don't know why. Um, but anyway, that's, we that's ended up great. running into each other shortly thereafter, and yeah. uh, the music started after that. So, so you're, how long? How long were you at IBM? I was only there for a short stint because the division I worked for got bought out by a company called Computerland. So, if anybody knows about, about PCs back in the early days, IBM never went into the PC business, even though they developed them. Yep. And I worked in a marketing plan for, for a company called a, uh, for IBM their AS400 program. I was in the marketing department for that. And our, my customers were IBM resellers who sold this mid-frame computer. Um, and you had to follow their marketing plan. It was very strict. Mm. Um, introducing new products, I, I learned doing that also. It was very fun. And it was the first time I ever had an opportunity to actually stand in front of a group of people and introduce people. I was kind of like the moderator, or I was kind of like the, you know, what you're doing. I was the guy who introduced everybody. I went through the agenda with everybody, and we invited people in. And I did stuff like that. Um, and then my division got sold to Computerland. Okay, so that was after. So now you're at, what happened? 
so for what happened to Computerland. So did you stay at Computerland? No, or? I went, and then it got bought by Nonex six months later. Okay. Or I got forget it. the timing between all this because it's a long yeah, time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Nonex, so I ended up working for Nonex Corporation, which which is not a bad deal. You, you know, you, I went from one seven billion dollar corporation to another seven billion dollar corporation. So in my head, pretty good. My goal was to to work for a big corporation and spend the rest of my life there. Understood. Obviously, we know that didn't work out that way. Thank God. Um, yeah, yeah. So. Um, you know, but I think. But I'll that's let you keep important. My story. Well, you just shared, hold on. So you yeah. shared something. Um, because we're conditioned, right? Mm -hmm. So you, in your in your mind at that particular point in time, was thinking, okay, listen, if I, if I stay with this corporation or if I go to this corporation, they could put together a nice retirement package for me, blah blah blah, whatever that looks like, and that's the normal. Uh, thought process. So let me let me as people get educated. Okay, so in my day, getting out of college in the '80s. Yep. Uh, nowadays, you need an MBA to get a job at IBM Corporation. Yep. Back in those days, I, I could have had a college degree in theology and still got a job at, at working at IBM if you did a good job in, on the interview portion of it. I'll tell you exactly what I told the the uh, the human resources manager when I first interviewed with them. Because my idea back in those days, and the way my parents grew up was, you spent 35 years at IBM, Exxon. Uh, whoever, what other, you know, uh, whatever corporation was out there in the area, Western Electric, you stayed yep. 30 years, retired, and went home. Pension, yeah. Pension and retired. 401k, yep. Um, so my, on my interview at IBM, I don't remember her name off the top of my head, it was a long time ago, I said to her, she said, what's your, what's your goal? I said, my goal is to get in the door here. I said, if there's a job called the IBM snow shoveler, mm. I'll take the snow shoveling job just to get into this company. Love it. And that's exactly what I said to her. Love him. it. I'll never forget it. That's important. <clears throat> I forget her name off the top of my head, but the interview was in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Yep. But I, and then the rest is history. So I, I, I got hired. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Phenomenal. And for all you young folks out there going on interviews, you want to let the people know that are going to hire you. You're willing to work seven days a week within the, the you know, whatever the law is, and you're going to work your butt off and you're there to serve and contribute and you just want to get better. That's always going to give you a great opportunity to get the job. So Brian, now IBM is done. Computerland is done. What happens after that? You're in your mid to late twenties, early thirties. What does the world look like? I got offered a job working for a trucking company just after that. Okay. Um, and I went for the money. Which company was that? I went for a tr uh, worked for a trucking company called Preston Truck Lines. Now that was a whole new business based on what you had seen. But it was still sales and marketing. Ah, excellent. That's the key. Sales. That's the key. Sales. Um, I, and marketing. I, I always like the sales portion of it because you're 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 in charge of your own destiny. Yes. That's the reality of it is. Yep. And that's the nice part about it. And I also didn't like like sitting behind a desk and. You wanted to be out there. Yeah, yeah, I like being out there and meeting people. And, and the, when you're calling on accounts, um, you're discovering that there's another world out there. Yes. You know, I, I, you know, I, I ran into the guy who made the dispensers for, for the commercial bathrooms you run into in Giant Stadium. Yeah. The paper towel dispensers. <laughs> yes. You know, or the guy who made the small roll, the plastic roll inside the toilet paper. Yep. It's just the, the core. Yep. It's, it's called the core, by the way. Yep. It's a cardboard core. I, I ran into those guys. Well, and they're very successful guys. Of, uh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. I ran into the company as a manufacturer of things. Yeah. So I ran into the company that manufactured back in the day before they have swiping for credit cards. They had a machine that you put the car credit card in and you swapped it over. Well, I I, that was one of my accounts, believe yep. it or not. So I, I, I learned a lot about other industries yeah. while I was a salesman for in, tra in transportation and trucking. And how long were you with whatever company? Until they went out of business. Okay. They went out of business and I took a job with another trucking company that went out of business. But at this point, are you guys married? Oh yeah, I'm married. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, kids are starting to come in. Uh, kids weren't. No, this is just before the kids got into the picture. Got it. And then the second trucking company I went for, I don't know if it's me or somebody else, but they ended up folding as well. A lot of lot, transportation changed after 1986 when they, when, uh, they, they de deregulated trucking companies. Yep. That's a whole other story. It was a whole other conversation for us to talk about. Yeah, they changed a lot in '86, including the Tax Act. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Was, that was a large part of it, by the way. Yep. Um, and so a lot of trucking companies dif had difficulty strug and struggled with competing against non-union carriers. Yep. So those two companies were union carriers. Did now, I at this point, are you dancing in politics a little bit? Like, there's a I lot was going always, on. I was always, I was always on the back side of politics. Got I, mean, it. I was the guy who helped write speeches. I was the guy who, uh, who developed. Um, and that was fun for you, though. I had a blast. Like you, blast. you just met new pe other people. I was, I was. I'll never forget. I was the. Um, I was, think I was still in college when George Bush, the senior father. Yep. And Dan Quayle ran their first election campaign. Eighty-eight. All right. I worked for the Morris County Republican Club, and I got hired by them. To run the Hudson County wow. portion of now, I don't, Hudson County. Now, by the way, I was Dangerous. born. I was born in Jersey City. You were yeah. born in Jersey City. Now, putting a put a Republican on the street corner <laughs> in Jersey City. I, I, I don't. I'm not so sure I get to how I could describe it, but it's kind of like putting a Yankee fan in, <laughs> in the, the middle Sox. of the Boston Red Sox 
surrounded by a bunch of maniacs who can't stand and hate the Yankee fans. Yes, okay. I totally get the and analogy. Then, and then multiply it by a thousand. That's how bad it is being a Republican standing on a street corner in Jersey City. Especially during election time. Luckily for me, I knew a few of those those chaps, so I was pretty protected, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was my first real foray into campaigns yeah. nationally. Wow. I, I, so I, you were just into it right out of college. I, I got that job by accident. Yeah. Or not. It was Amazing. part time. And back in those days, no, nowadays we have cell phones and you can make 50 calls at once. You can That's text. Right. Like right now, Rob will get off the phone, you know, finish your podcast and you could text 15 people and say at the same time, did you see our podcast? Absolutely. Back in those days, we had a row of phones lined up. Yeah. We had 15 people on 15 phones taking notes and going through lists of mail lists. And I had to, it was it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. You, you like the energy, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, You like fun. being part of something bigger. I did. I did. Movement, yeah. So Until one day someone said, put your money where your mouth is. And what happened? I became a... I became a, a um, who said it? A Without giving his name, but who said uh, it? was a former mayor of, of, uh, of a town I, town I live in now. Okay. The town I live in now. So they were, were they calling you out, though? No. No, okay. no, not really. Or they were like, you're good enough to do this. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is? Truth be told, at the time we couldn't find candidates to take the job. Okay. And I was dedicated enough and I was loyal enough yep. to say, you know what, we'll hold the spot and make sure we don't have anybody not run. Yeah. Well, I unfortunately came up, actually fortunately at the time, it wasn't a good time for, for us to run a candidate because yep. politics, timing is everything, just like investing your money is. And um, the timing wasn't right and I wasn't ready for it anyway. Yeah. And I didn't really campaign for it. Yeah. So we lost that election. And then I became a member of the Board of Education in my community, and I was there for seven years. I became oh. president of the Board of Ed and all this other kind of stuff. And that was in that was what town? In the borough of North Arlington, where Got I live it. now. Okay. Which is where I'm a councilman now, by the way. Awesome. And, Love uh, it. So I'm going to go back a little bit. Go for so it. So we're married. Mm -hmm. uh, our kids are, you know, we're starting to have children. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the second trucking company that you were working with as you've got, I'm sure you've gotten better in sales and everything you did sure, yeah. goes out of business because of the 1986 tax act. And by the way, guys, gals, the reason why I'm breaking this down, cause take notes. There's certain little nuggets and distinctions that maybe be good enough just to get you through today. Right. And that's the whole point of these interviews. And when you hear about the success side of, of what Brian's created and been a part of, it's pretty incredible because sometimes you just got to let things unfold live comfortably in the space of uncertainty because if you could do that and really bring forth your best best foot every single day a lot of good things happen so now second right, so let's let's just marry start. kids we're married we have kids I, I you've known her we're, family now yep. her, fa her, fa her father has a successful business successful business right? and he, he he offers the I'll, i was saying to myself do i go back to school do i do i want to go to mass get a master's degree do i want to go this route oh yeah do i go that route it depends on what route i want to go and her, and her father offered me a job in sales working for so a small freeze. rental company. Let's stop for a second. Yep. Now, for me, I think I know I would have been like, ah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I would have felt like, which was the wrong feeling, just so we're clear. But I think my own insecurities and or fear would have stepped in. How did you feel? Um, for me, my decision was solely temporary. Mm. I was not doing this to spend the rest of my life. This was a, this was a means to something else. Okay. Um, I never expected this to end up spending the rest of my life there. And of course, my wife and I being owners of the, of the property. How did Donna feel at that point when you first? She was happy about it. You know, okay. we discussed it a little bit, you know, and, you know, at the time I wasn't working and we weren't, I wasn't sure what, what path I wanted to take. You know, we didn't have, actually at that time, we didn't even have kids yet. Okay. We were trying well, to we plan. Married, though. Well, we were married, yeah, sure. Yeah. We were planning a family and it just happened just shortly thereafter. Got it. So okay. once the child, the children are born, we all know we get a little nervous. We want to make sure we can take care of yep. our family, and the rest is history. Now, but you say yes, it's temporary. So I say yes, it's temporary. Describe the company then. We were a small trailer rental company, and I'll give you an example of what a trailer rental company does. My customers are trucking companies, and you um, knew how to speak trucker language because and I was previous. in transportation, so yep. it gave me a little bit of an edge. I understand the trucking side and their needs. Yeah, and when they tell me that they're a T LTL carrier, most people don't know what an LTL carrier is. That's a less than truckload carrier. Yep. That means a person who's picking up freight picks up from five different customers and brings it back to a hub. Got it. So I was lucky enough to understand the hub and spoke system of how freight works. Yeah. So it helped me with the lingo of talking to these traffic managers you're dealing with. Yep. And why was talking to trucking companies, um, trying to offer them our needs. The nice part about offering the trailer rent. So we, anyway, so get, let me get back just for a second. Yep. So we offer, we rent trailers, just the trailer part, not the truck part. Just so Got it. Yep. We had about 400 trailers at the time. Uh, when we sold, we had over 2,000. Wow. Just to let you know. 
So we, we increase the size of the company uh, tremendously. 100%. Uh, yeah, tremendously. Yeah. Um, our profit margin has shrunk over time, and it's probably why we're sitting here today, um, not through any of the things that we've done. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I called on trucking companies. Anybody who moved freight from point A to point B on the road with a tractor was a potential customer for and us. And these were calls you made every day? Every single day, but mostly in person. Yeah. Nice part about our company was, and I, it was an, actually a good sales pitch was, um, every time you called our office, a human being answered the telephone. Love it. So let me translate. Never got, never got, never, I used to call it a void mail, not voicemail. <laughs> let me translate one thing, folks, because <laughs> whenever we talk about sales with integrity, it's always important. What I heard Brian say, because I'm, I'm tapping into my level five listening, was that because of his experience on the other side of the business and whenever he was engaging in conversations, he was meeting people on the other end of the phone where they were. He wasn't trying to get them to where he was. And if we know how to meet people where they are and we build high level rapport so the guard is down because everyone's being sold something every day, we could then gain leverage and in that space of leverage with integrity, we could then be able to move the ball with influence into what we have to offer. Thanks for sharing that. I really appreciate it, brother. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. So now you're there temporarily for one year, two years, five years, 10 years. Temporary ended up being 27 years, basically. Yep. So, I, mean, I sat in the same office for 27 years. But, um, but at some point, <laughs> your, your father-in-law hmm? felt comfortable enough to pass the torch on. Yeah. What, what, it was, what it was, was that uh, like? There's, there's a couple of factors involved. Um, a couple of factors were one, um, if we were going to buy this business off of our father-in-law, um, um, it would be my wife and I, my brother-in-law. Oh, sorry, I keep on moving over here. Yeah. It would be, uh, there's a couple factors involved. One is a legitimate family business, but the other factors are my partners would be my wife and I, my brother-in-law and his wife, and my other brother-in-law and his wife. Wow. So there were six of us involved. Talk about. So all you, so wait, so when you first started working there temporarily, were they there then or did they come on after? Uh, one brother-in-law was, okay. another brother-in-law was not. Wow, that's wild. Um, yeah. So um, talk about the epitome of the real family business. Mm. Um, yeah. We, uh, my wife was downstairs, and I, I'm sorry, my wife was upstairs, and I was downstairs. But to Literally, have, I would, if I look through the floor, she'd be, I'd be looking at her bottom. <laughs> to have everybody communicate and get along, you know, listen, there's challenges everywhere, of course. Everywhere you go. But to be able to have that for such a long period of time is incredible. It's a I, really incredible. I mean, listen, that alone is incredible. You know, everybody had their job um, and we didn't really spend too much time stepping on each other's toes. Beautiful. Um, partnerships are very difficult, even when you're not related. Yeah. And people often looked at us all the time and said, why? You know, that must be difficult. In all honesty, we all had the same goal. Yeah. And the same goal was to make sure we all had one thing in common. Yep. The six of us. Yep. We had a good role model. Yes. Not just our parents, but we had a good role model, role model in my wife's father. Yes. Um, and his financial acumen, um, his his ability to want to build a future for his own family yep. that he saw in us actually yep. over time. Um, having him around as a person to be the modest, conservative voice of reason was probably 51% of the 100% of why we succeeded. And how about his daughters? Well, yeah. Well, like, listen, like they, that whole like they that, still quote their father every day, and, yeah. and their mother for that matter. And what, don't you want your daughter to do the same thing? Of course. I know. I would love that. Yeah. Of I course. mean, I think it's like when you look at this story, this is not a normal story, you no. know, which makes it no, phenomenal, no, no. right? That's why I wanted to talk right. about it, yeah. because there's so many different dynamics, there's so much gravitational pull, and yep. you know, we're all you know, folks that are married or in relationships understand that there's certain talks behind the scenes that yep. go on and. Whenever money is involved, money tends to have a charge, right? Percentage ownership, who's the boy, you know, and you said it best, understanding roles and responsibilities. Was there like monthly and, meetings? And, and the other big part about it was trust. Yeah. I mean, was uh, there, did you guys meet? Was, was there like meetings on a monthly basis? Like what was the structure we're, no, we're, from we're, a we're, teamwork <laughs> standpoint? We didn't have to have a meeting on a monthly basis. We had a meeting every 15 minutes, it seemed like. Yeah. Because, you know, in order to get to my office, uh, my wife would walk down the stairs and go to Eddie's office th through my office. And yeah. if Eddie had to go upstairs to go to Donna, he, he walked through my office. So the conversations were constant. And not only that, we did everything together. Yeah. You know, we went on vacations together. It's amazing. Uh, so the conversation was relatively all the time. Yeah. Um, so it never went away, but it was kind of good conversation. only because there was a level of trust between all, between all of us that it worked out. And, and um, during the process of success, right? Mm -hmm. During the success steps, the strategies, was there a time when... 
there had to be a recalibration recal because there was a little bit of friction. Was there, without being specific, of course, was there certain times that you had to kind of maybe get together? I, I have no doubt in my mind that both my brother-in-laws went back to their house and wanted to punch me in the nose. He, he is from Hudson County, kind of. I, and, and by the way, my brother-in-law, one brother-in-law is from Irvington, New Jersey. Yeah. My other brother-in-law is from o Union City, New Jersey. Prep. Prep guy. Yep. And of course, the rest of us were all born in Margaret Head Hospital in Jersey City. You know, so. But did you want to punch them as they wanted no, to punch it, you? No, it never, it, I'm tell, it, so let me, let me rephrase that. So actually, let me correct you. Yep. That never happened. No, I know you said once. Never to. happened. Yes. We always angered each other, I'm sure. I'm just only assuming that because yeah. I know me, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, and there were times that, you know, sometimes we would think in our heads, oh, geez, I wish he wouldn't have done that. Yeah. But it was forgotten by the next day. That's amazing. That's, that it just, really is. The conversation or the anger wasn't worth it because the end goal was exactly the same. Yep. Nobody was making a decision for themselves there. Yeah. Our paychecks were equal. Yeah. Ready? So okay. here it is, guys. When you're part of something bigger than yourself, when you're part of a team and you sacrifice for each other and you're staying in the space of growth and contribution, growth and contribution, that's what I'm hearing right now. Growth and it wasn't me, 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 me. It was growth and contribution. Yeah. There's no pettiness, and when there's no pettiness, there's no resentments, and when there's no resentments, the business can flourish. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. That's really, really I'm awesome. Happy to, I'm happy to share it with you. Um, we won't get into specifics because out of out of out of respect for you and Donna, mm -hmm. right? Um, but at some point, you know, we're exiting the business at a fairly young age when you yeah. look at what's going on, and exiting that business has produced, let's call it, a life and a generational wealth component. Um, time freedom is in your favor. Yeah, uh, yeah, you could do what you want, when you want, with who you want, and you don't have to ask permission, except for Donna. Um, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, how uh, does that feel? Well, I'll tell you, it, it's funny. Um, I mean, our, our last ADP paycheck, if you want to call it that, yep. was about three weeks ago. So it hasn't been that long, even though we've been exiting the business for so long. I have yet to expressed any type of happiness yet is, i have does it not seem real no it's definitely okay. real because you know because the money's in the in the bank and we're looking at we're, we're sitting together you and i trying to figure out a way to make our lives better for our families yep. still the goal is still exactly and it really i guess probably first and foremost i have yet to light a fire and dance around it don and i have yet to dance around the fire and happiness yep. because we still have concerns about taking care of our family yep. and the goal hasn't changed the goal is still to take care of our family and we still have those tools that again, we had the role model in, in, in my, my, my in-laws yep. uh, from the business acumen side Absolutely. to make sure that our decisions were for 10, 15, 20 years down the road and not tomorrow. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of people in my position right now that would probably go out and buy themselves an 80 foot boat and a, You're right. and a, you know, and a, a big old expensive car. And we really don't have, we're not that kind of people, nope. um, but we learned from the right people. Yes. Um, again, still no celebration on our end. I guess somewhere along the line, you'll have to tell me when I have to do that. But uh, we haven't we haven't celebrated yet. Well, so, it, no. you know, celebrating um, is not necessarily to your point. And think you know, celebrating doesn't mean the eighty foot boat, right? No. Um, which is something I think you, you would never do. I, I don't want to say never, but it's just not in your DNA. Um, I think that um, you know, I think it's okay to to just kind of step back and say, wow, look look at look at what's happened. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> You know, it's funny. If, I don't want anybody like, like I'm sitting here. You know, I'm, I'm saying who our role model in business was. Yep. But I had a very, very common up upbringing that you had. Yeah. With you know, parents that my mom, my mom, both my parents re retired from the state of New Jersey. Yeah. My mom worked for NJ Transit. My dad retired from the Turnpike Authority. Wow. And you know, I remember my father working those double shifts while I was at St. Peter's College, and my younger brother was at Villanova, and my sister was at Ramapo. And I remember my mother. You know, my parents didn't go on vacation. We did the two weeks in Lavalette, and that was the end of it. Yep. You know, they didn't go to Florida. I never went to Disney in my entire life up until I was old enough to pay for it myself. Yep. And by the way, I never yearned for anything. Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't feel as always missing anything. You yeah. know. So. Yeah. That's a testament to them as well. Yeah. You know? Amazing so, parents. Yeah. No doubt about it. So, um, you know, what I heard, which I love, legacy. It's, it's really about you know, you guys are grounded, um, and the family is you know the unit of the family is the most important. No doubt. What does it look like? Um, in the future, let's say, you know, 10 years from now, 
what is what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want what do you want that to look like? When they talk about dad or Uncle Brian <laughs> or Grandpa Brian or yeah. my husband Brian, um, or my business partner Brian or my client Brian, if you could have it your way, what do you want that to sound like? You know, um, again, we we have no our goal is still exactly the same is to is to build wealth yep and you keep on using that word generational wealth put money to the side though yeah, yeah. again what do you want the story to be about you i want to have a lot of grandkids do you? <laughs> I do. Yeah. That's you awesome. know, don and i want to have a lot of children and we ended it at three because we had to yeah um but yeah, we want to have a lot of grandchildren. We want to have the we we, we do want to have them running around the house, you know, down the shore, and we want to be able to take them places. We want to be able to make sure that we can provide for our grandchildren the same way we're providing for our children today. Yeah, shared experiences. Exactly, and I want them to have it a little easier. Yep. Um, like, uh, hopefully, planning instead of just planning for our children. Yep. Let's plan for our grandchildren's future as well. Yeah. Um, that's and awesome. I think that's pretty much where Donna and I want to go. And I think if she shakes her head over there, she'll say yes. I mean, other than an occasional vacation here. She wants there. to buy a lot of real estate, I heard. <laughs> 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 well, she'll adamantly tell you that she's specifically retired right it. now. Um, I love it. But, yeah, it's... it's uh, I, listen... Retirement's I, only a word that... that, that uh, that's right. Know, you're it's, right. <laughs> it's not even real. No, it's like, not what is real. it? I mean, people retire from one and do something else. I but never expect to be sitting here talking to you. Doing it's this, a right? mindset. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, if you... Grandkids, kids, I love yeah. that, by the way. Yeah. Um, what do you stand for in the world to help make the world a better place? Well, listen, I, I think I have, a, personally, my wife and I have a history of giving back to the community as it works. I love it. Um, I've spent my entire life uh, as a volunteer, well, my entire life, I spent the last 30 years as a volunteer farmer in my community. Yep. When we talk about 9-11, um, we live so close to New York City yep. that my company my fire company went to 9 11 and 10 41 in the morning so wow it, it, it hits you us pretty close. early yeah, we got there early yeah, we got there a little early um and not only just doing those things i, I mean i coached every sport in the planet in town yeah. um one of the things i'm really proud of um and it's not just the volunteer fire service and its commitment that it takes and the timing it takes with your family and the, and the barbecues missed and the that's right. And, and out, you know, when it snows out, we don't come home, stuff like that. That's and right. Floods, you know, like the floods we just had. Every volunteer in the state of New Jersey was, was out 24 hours a day. We, yeah, we just had a really bad flood yeah, here in New Jersey. So yep. all, all those guys, you know, my heart goes out to how much time they spent out there. Gals, too, of course. Uh, one of the things we did one day was a girl, came, I was fire chief at the time, as a matter of fact. I was fire chief for six years. And one of the, one of the wives walks into my office. And she said, you know, the Queen of Peace Church Pantry, food pantry, is really struggling. They have nothing, almost nothing in there now. I'm like, how is that possible? Because I always read all the time that there's food drives all over the place. Well, people want to give food, food out, but you really have to go get it from them instead of just mm. putting it out at the Knights of Columbus, which I'm a member of too, as a matter of fact. Knights of Columbus is collecting it uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Monday, or, uh, or the VFW is collecting it uh, at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. You know, people forget. Yeah. So we have this thing in our small borough of North Arlington with 16,000 people in it. It's the annual Santa Claus parade. So I'm sitting there, and again, the marketing hat went on in my head. <laughs> and I'm sitting there with a bunch of ex-chiefs, which is kind of like having your guys around yep. you when you're making decisions in the fire service. These are the guys you want in the room. Perfect. Well, they had to be in my office, my office at the time. Thank God, I had a bunch of maker, a couple of makers and shakers in the room. And... We sat there and I said, we need a mechanism. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, we need a reason for people to come out and give food to the, to the, to the, to the food pantry. Nope. So we're thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. And finally, one of my buddies says, how about the Santa Claus parade? And I said, that's not a bad idea. So as Santa Claus was driving around our town, which by the way, is a 50 year um, tradition, whom anybody from our community knows, I remember Santa Claus waking me up when I was a little kid, nine o'clock in the morning on my block. It's a big tradition in our town. Well, we sent a message to every parent through the schools that this is our annual food drive as well. Mm. So we filled the entire food pantry with a year's worth of food wow. in one day. That's awesome. And we do it every year now. That's every awesome. year now. 
uh, for the last, since 2008, we do it yep. every year. Did you see how his nervous system changed? <laughs> not about money, but when he talked about his kids and grandkids, because it's not about money. <laughs> or when he talked about feeding people, this is what I'm talking about, growth and, con thanks for sharing that, by the way. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. And that's what growth and contribution yeah. is all about. Um, awesome. And, you know, Brian, I, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, you know, you, you've, you've been a part of different, you know, industries and, and sales. For anyone out there right now that's either struggling or anyone out there that um, if you could give a message to that could really help them through the day, on how to really kind of take a look at life the way you do. Um, anything that pops into your head, I'd, I'd be happy to hear about. Can we say something right now? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Not for, for them. Listen, uh, nobody's perfect. Just to let you know. Uh, everybody in this world makes mistakes. Some some mistakes are greater than others. Yep. Um, but if you want to talk about sales and marketing, um, I just had a friend of mine who had some great successes recently. And I looked at him, I said to him specifically, I said, well, I'm not surprised. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, to me, being successful in business is whoever the hardest worker always seems to be the luckiest. Mm. That's what parent, it's always Love apparent that. to me. Particularly in sales. Whoever works the hardest is always that guy who always seems to get the luckiest on the, on the other side of the fence too. So all I can say to people is just keep on working hard, keep your nose to the, to the grind, know you're gonna make mistakes over time, learn from your mistakes, um, and just keep on pushing forward, that's it. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for coming in. I My pleasure. It. My you. pleasure. And we listen, do this for the NFL, too. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Definitely. I would love to. So, listen, folks, anyone out there, just, you know, if, if you have any questions, always feel free to go into the comments section, add some comments, share successes. If you ever want to speak to one of the team members, you could always speak to one of the team members. That's always available to you. But I really want to hear about not only what your successes are, but other topics that you'd like to hear about in the future. Thank you so much.